The leader of Sudan's paramilitary rapid support forces, General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, visited Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, today in the second leg of a rare publicly announced foreign tour. On Wednesday, Dagalo met Uganda's President Yaware Museveni at his country home. It was his first confirmed appearance outside of Sudan since the war between RSF and the Sudanese army broke out in mid-April. Reuters News says Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demaga Makonnen met Dagalo at Ethiopia's Bole International Airport today. Posts on the social media platform X show the RSF leader arriving in an aircraft belonging to a United Arab Emirates airline. Reuters notes that last month, a top Sudanese general accused the UAE of backing the RSF's war effort, funneling supplies through countries including Uganda. The UAE denied the charges. The UN support mission in Libya Unsmil stressed the need for the actors in the Libyan crisis to agree on a clear electoral path and a timetable for the election and to reach a consensus on forming a new unified government that will guide the country towards elections, stressing that delaying action will deepen the division and expose Libya to various threats that threaten the lives of people in Libya and undermine regional stability. Wolfgang Porsche, a former Austrian military attaché in Libya, discussed the statement with VOA senior analyst Mohamed El Shenawi. This certainly needs to be seen in connection with the five party talks intended by UN Esapati. He wants to launch talks with the Presidential Council, Prime Minister Dabeba, the Command of the Libyan National Army, Khalifa Haftar, and the chairs of both rival parliaments, HR and HCS. But Prime Minister Dabeba said he will participate, but only under the condition that this is not about a new interim government and that the elections will be run only after there is a new permanent constitution. And such a permanent constitution is certainly not even on the horizon. The chair of the House of Representatives said, on the other side, he will not participate if Dabeba participates, as the HR has withdrawn the confidence from the Dabeba. Government. And he said, if he participates without the paper, he will only discuss about the implementation of the controversial election laws, which foresee as a first step a new interim government without the paper. Khalifa Haftar said he will only participate if the prime minister appointed by the House of Representatives, Osama Hama, will be also allowed to sit on the table. So altogether, I would say the prospects for a success of the current UN initiative are not existing. The on smell statement said Libyan people are watching with growing frustration and efforts to hold elections over the past two years have been marked by open-ended negotiations, procrastinations and questionable intent despite repeated calls from the UN Security Council on the need to reach a compromise. What are the prospects of reaching a compromise between Libyan rivals? Well, I would say even outside of the Fatihi initiative, There is no serious interest on any side of the main actors to find such a compromise and to go forward to elections. All of them can live with the current situation very well, and most of them would not be in their position anymore after elections. So no one of the presidential council has any realistic chance to continue his political career after the elections. Most members of the rival parliaments would certainly have no chance to get re-elected. Prime Minister Dabeba wants only to have elections under his conditions so that he is certainly re-elected. And he uses his current role to further the influence of his own clan. And this leads even increasingly to conflicts in his hometown Misrata. In the east, Khalifa Haftar, the LNA commander, forces the grip of his family on the areas controlled by the Libyan National Army. Just last Wednesday, his son, engineer Belgasim Haftar, was appointed executive director of the Turner Reconstruction Fund, which oversees billions of Libyan dinar for the reconstruction of the destroyed areas in the east. However, from my point, not only the winners of the current situation are clear, but also the losers, and those are the Libyan people. The National Institution for Human Rights in Libya said recently that the poverty rate has risen to 40% during the last year. So it is quite clear, Libya is slowly gliding down into even more chaos, but it seems to be no one cares. So how do you explain the lack of interest that the international community shows in facilitating a Libyan political solution, or at least stand united 
in word and deed and urge Libyan stakeholders choose the path to peace, unity and democracy. I would say there are two important points for this. The first one is that with the exception of Turkey and maybe Egypt, the influence of the international community is very, very limited. And Egypt and Turkey consider their national interests are currently not serious threatened by the situation in Libya as it is right now. Secondly, the international interests on Libya has significantly cooled down, especially with regard to economy, with regard to investments. There is no legal certainty. Even recent contacts between Libya's National Oil Corporation and international oil majors like Eni, Total Energy and Adnok from the Emirates are challenged. Furthermore, Libya is not honoring its financial commitments and, well known, the security situation in Libya is still very much fragile. Actually, I expect more that some of the remaining companies still active in Libya will withdraw from Libya. The world is not Libya-centric. And yes, there are security concerns, of course, with regard to terrorism and in Europe also with regard to migration. But those are dealt with through the current structures, through the Dabeba government and through LNA Commander Haftar. That was uh, Wolfgang Postai, former Austrian military attaché in Libya. He was speaking to VOA's Mohamed El Shenawi. Ivory Coast will deliver 50 million liters of gasoline per month to Guinea following the explosion and fire at the country's main fuel depot. Ivorian National Television announced Wednesday evening. Cote d'Ivoire is committed to delivering 50 million liters of gasoline per month to Guinea, said a journalist from radio television Ivolien, without specifying the duration of this aid. The practical terms of the contract and the security of the convoys will be signed this Thursday, said another journalist from the channel, specifying that Guinea had a monthly need of 70 million liters of gasoline. The Guinean Minister of the Economy, Mosa Sisi, met on Wednesday in Abidjan with the Ivorian Minister of Mines, Oil and Energy, Mamadou Sangafoa Kolibeli. Saturday, five days after the explosion and fire in Conakry of the country's main fuel depot, which left 24 dead and 454 injured, according to a new report, the Guinean government announced the resumption of gasoline distribution in rationing it. 25 liters per vehicle and 5 liters per motorcycle and tricycle were authorized with the use of cans prohibited. The population was deprived of gasoline throughout the territory since the explosion and fire, leading to the paralysis of a large part of the economy. Demonstration in several localities last week, some terms turned into clashes between groups of young people demanding the return of gasoline to service stations and the security forces. Furthermore, the Guinean government announced Wednesday that the fire at the fuel depot was completely extinguished in a press release sent to AFP. In total, more than 11,000 people were directly affected by fire.